Hello and welcome to ACCA Financial Management. This is chapter number one. And chapter number one is an introduction to the financial management function. And what I'm going to do within this chapter is I'm going to talk to you about what financial management's all about. I'm going to try and put it into the context of all of the other papers you've looked at so far. And then we're going to look at how financial management and stakeholder management goes very, very closely hand in hand. So to start with, we're going to look at the different other papers that you've covered so far. So you've potentially covered FMA, which is the cost accounting paper. Cost accountants will gather data. So cost accountants will gather data. That data is then passed over to the management accountant, which is also covered within paper FMA, and also a little bit of performance management paper as well. These management accountants take that data, process the data, turn it into information. That information is then given to managers. Managers will then make a decision that decision was usually covered within your paper FAB, the accountant in business. It's also covered within APM, Advanced Performance Management, and SBL, the big case paper, when you get to the P levels. Once you've made that type of decision, that decision will have an effect. The effect might be an increase in profits, losses, assets, liabilities. The effect is measured by the financial accountant. So cost accountant collects data. Data is converted into information by the management accountant gives it to the manager to make a decision. That decision has an effect. That effect is then measured by the financial accountant and the financial accountant's work is then measured by or reviewed by the auditor, which will be paper A and A. Now we haven't talked about paper FM yet. Paper FM, financial management, is all about a slightly different focus. It's not really an accounting job and it's not quite a decision-making job either. Financial management is all about supporting the corporate objectives. It's supporting the overall corporate objectives. And you have to support the objectives at each level of management. So if you think back to Anthony's hierarchy of management within paper FAB, we talked about the idea of having strategic, tactical and then operational objectives. The financial manager has to support all of those objectives. And that's why when we look at strategic stuff, we can look at areas such as boundary management, so how our organisation interacts with the external environment. We can look at sources of debt and equity capital in a very long-term context. And we can make it all the way down to our operational side of things by looking at simple areas such as budgeting. So there'll be a budgeting issue in here as well. So there's lots and lots of different areas that the financial manager has got to get involved in. So the financial manager will be there to support all levels of corporate objectives. To make sure you can support all levels of corporate objectives, what happens is the financial manager will actually get involved in trying to set those objectives. And then once the objectives have been set, how are we going to achieve them? To achieve any type of objective normally incurs the use of resources. The financial manager will determine what resources are required and then go out and get them. That's why we say that the financial manager is involved in boundary management, because some of these resources may be internal, some of them will be external to our organisation. So the financial manager will have to go outside of the organisation and get additional resources, such as debt and equity capital. To do that, your financial manager will have to understand the external environment, and that's why we have an entire section on economics because you need to understand the economic impact of everything that's happening outside on our organisation. Once we've obtained the resources, we then allow different departments and areas within our organisation to use them, says the implementation of the resources. We then need to control the use of those resources as well. Now, if you've taken the FR paper already, what I'm going to go through now will make an awful lot of sense. If you haven't, think back to your FFA paper, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at a statement of financial position. Now, a statement of financial position looks something similar to this. It's not exactly the right way around, but it just allows me to describe what the financial manager actually does. So we've got non-current assets, current assets, current liabilities. Give me a total of my total assets. And then we've got share cap and then we've got reserves and various other revaluation reserves and such downstairs as well. Non-current assets. So the amount of non-current assets will be determined by an investment decision. That investment decision will be a net present value decision. That's something which is covered within this paper. So investment decisions, net present value, discounted cash flows. There's entire chapters with an S. There's entire chapters looking at investment decisions. 
that could quite happily be a big 20 marker. If not, you should expect to see it in section B for 10 marks. Current assets and current liabilities, that's all about working capital management. That's another essential area of this syllabus. That could quite happily be a section B question. If you're really lucky, you'll get it as a section C for 20 marks because it's nice, simple number crunching and then a little bit of interpretation. Non-current liabilities, so longer term liabilities, and then also longer term equity, which is my share capital and a little bit of reserves. That's all about raising long term finance. That's something the financial manager does as well. So that's the split between debt and equity finance. So the split between debt and equity finance. That type of business finance and raising capital is essential to this paper. And then right down at the very very bottom, we've got our reserves figure, which is our retained reserves. I need to know how much I should pay out in terms of dividends. The dividend decision has an impact on market value and the external environment has an impact on how much of a dividend I should pay out. Those dividend decisions are the type of things that will be used to satisfy key stakeholder groups, such as shareholders. So that's the type of decision that the financial manager will be involved in as well. So this one slide gives you a generic understanding of almost everything which is going to happen within this syllabus. You will cover all of these areas and a little bit more. Towards the end of the syllabus, we start looking at risk management. And risk management is all about what type of things can change externally that can then influence all of these numbers. So there's a huge swathe of stuff. There's a, it's a very, very big syllabus. Do not expect this to be just a number crunching paper. It's really not. There's an awful lot of words in here. Historically, you've seen about 60% of this exam being based on words rather than numbers. So don't think that financial management is just a number cruncher. It's really not. So our financial manager, what he's looking to do is he's going to understand exactly what our objectives are. So he's got to understand what our objectives are. So he needs to understand what an objective is to start with. An objective is a broad primary outcome. And you can relate this back to the performance management paper if you've already completed that because there will be various different objectives set, which will then go on to critical success factors and key performance indicators. That's all a PM issue. What we're looking at here is what type of objectives should we set? So we need to understand what type of objectives do we want to set? We need to understand why we want to set those types of objectives. So we need to work out why we want to set those objectives. And the reason why we will set various different types of objectives is to try to keep our stakeholders, stakeholders happy. So we have to try and keep our stakeholders happy. Now, with regard to these stakeholders, this now means that we need to understand stakeholder management. Now, I know that you've seen a Mendelo matrix within FAB and potentially within the performance management paper. We're not, not going to go down that route. That's something that you'll cover later on within the syllabi. You'll have a look at that within SBL and APM if you take that as an optional paper. The only level of difficulty or the level of expanse I've got with regard to stakeholder management is we can either maximize the outcome for an individual stakeholder. So we can maximize the outcome for an individual stakeholder or we can just satisfy them which means we give them a little bit, we give them enough so that they don't whinge too much, so they don't change anything, or we can give them nothing at all, in which case there may be change. I'm not keen on the idea of giving a key stakeholder group nothing. I don't want them to change their behavior because that will have ramifications within the entire organization. So I need to consider maximizing their benefit or at least satisficing their benefit. Now that word satisficing is really important to me. Satisficing is not a typo. It's a really important area of the syllabus. And what it means is giving a key stakeholder group an amount of reward or amount of return or amount of something which keeps them reasonably happy. Not super happy, but reasonably happy. Now, all of the objectives that we have across the entire organization must cascade down from our key long-term corporate objectives. We've got the strategic objectives, which then fire into tactical, which then fire into operational objectives. So you're looking at super long-term to medium-term to short-term. Within these objectives, some objectives will be financial, some will be non-financial. Cross-references back to performance management paper, specifically looking at things like the balanced scorecard with that mixture of financial and non-financial performance indicators. 
that could be quite an easy way of understanding where we're going with this. If you have got an organization which is profit making, then I'm looking to maximize profits and maximize shareholder wealth, usually. If I've got an organization which is not profit making, I've got a different type of long term objective. The first thing we have to do is determine these long term objectives. So the first thing we have to do is determine these long term objectives. Now, the long term objectives will be determined on the basis of am I profit making or am I not profit making? Let's start with a profit making organization because it's a little bit easier to understand for us as accountants. If you have objectives for a profit making organization, the type of things these profit making organizations will be looking to do would include financial objectives such as maximizing shareholder wealth, which means paying large amounts of dividends, having good financial performance to increase share price, potentially increasing share price through an increase in your bottom line profit. All of these objectives are short term. You've seen that within your performance management paper. So all of these objectives are short term. We then have non-financial objectives. Non-financial objectives include things such as quality, satisfaction, environmental impact, market product diversification. So there's an ANSOF issue in there as well. Market share issues. All of these non-financial objectives are long term. Now, you need to make sure you're happy with at least three or four financial and non-financial objectives for a profit-making organization. We've actually seen a 20-mark question which just says, talk to me about the objectives within this organization. And we give you a scenario where the organization is described. It was actually a non-profit-making organization, but you had to start with this as your introductory comments. Now, if I'm looking at a non-profit-making organization, we call these NFPs. These are very, very examinable. We need to come up with a way of determining what our objectives are. And the objectives here will be dependent upon the reason for the organization's establishment. So if you've got a charity, the charity is set up to achieve a specific outcome. It could be the eradication of poverty within a certain geographic area. It could be the eradication of hunger or thirst within a geographic area. It could be anything else along those lines. It could be um, the State Health Service, which is a non-profit making organisation, which is designed to potentially keep everybody nice and healthy. Or is it there to actually stop people becoming poorly in the first, the first case? There's a mixture of objectives there within the state health service. Police force. Is the police force supposed to make sure that everybody never commits a crime? Or is it there to catch everybody after they've committed the crime? Again, a mixture of, of objectives. The organisation has to work out what those objectives are to start with. It's not as easy as you might think. Then what we have to do is try and find a way to measure performance. And this fil filters back into my performance management paper as well. Once I've got these objectives and the objectives will be determined based on my key stakeholder groups, I can then determine whether or not I'm actually doing a good job at achieving these objectives. Now, the way we can measure this performance of a non-profit making organization will normally be through value for money, VFM. And value for money, VFM, focuses in on the three E's as a way of measuring performance. And the first E that we have is economy. Now, economy is all about getting resources which means the financial manager will have an impact in here. So a non-profit making organization, an NFP, will still have a financial manager who looks at economy issues. The second E that we have to have an awareness of is effectiveness. Now, effectiveness is all about do we achieve our results? Do we achieve our objectives? So, for instance, are patients made better? Do they have to keep on coming back? Is there an issue there? Effectiveness is how good we are at doing something. Efficiency is how fast we are or how many times we can do it for that quantity of resources. So effectiveness is about the outputs. Efficiency is about the conversion of my inputs. So economy is the inputs. Efficiency converts it. Effectiveness measures the outputs. Now, stakeholder management is essential for any financial manager. And from a stakeholder management perspective, we need to identify exactly who our stakeholders are to start with, and then we need to work out whether or not we can understand what they want, and then can we satisfy what they want? All of these questions will have to be answered 
potentially within a 20 mark scenario based question. Now, hopefully that all makes sense. It's a little bit wordy to start with, and we're going to start getting into very, very specific areas very quickly. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you very much for your time and attention, guys. I'll see you all bright eyed and bushy tailed at chapter two very soon.